which we really appreciate. Uh, it helps push the project forward. And I want to show some of the um, some of the progress we've made as we as this project um, is about to go into its alpha release, uh, so that people from the community can evaluate it, discuss it, and uh, improve it. Going to share my screen. Okay. All right. Hopefully that brings up my Chrome browser for you. And so I just wanted to talk a little history that in Civi CRM, we have a lot of forms. It's a huge application. And the forms are generally written as templates. And the, most of the forms have been written as templates that are uh, in files in Civi CRM. And that tells exactly how the form should look. For example, um, the new individual form, which I'm sure you've all seen if you've used Civi CRM at all. Um, this is a big form. I'm using the Bootstrap uh, shortage theme, by the way, which is why it might look a little bit different than um, the way you're using it and check out that theme if you haven't already. So this is what the new contact form looks like and it is a monster and this is just the first accordion and then there's all these other accordions that have just as much stuff underneath them. So people have wondered over the years, can I simplify this form or can I rearrange this form? And the answer is no without doing some overrides and writing some HTML code to change the way the form looks on your server. Uh, and then, of course, if you make those changes, you then have to keep up with upgrades to Civi CRM and the possibilities of your file getting out of sync with the file uh, that's written on the server. So we would really like to be able to do this a better way, to have this form be something that you can just as an administrator, drag and drop things around and make it look the way that you want it to look for your users. But that's a big project and there's a lot of forms in Civi CRM and this system of hard coded templates on the server does not lend itself to that very well. So we've raised funds and we've started work on something else, which is a new way of doing forms that are um, also in, in templates, but templates that you can edit and then are sent to the browser via Angular JS, uh, so they can be a lot more dynamic. So let me give you an example. Um, so we have, if you install the AFFORM extension, which stands, AFF stands for the Affable Form Framework. That's something clever that Tim came up with because Tim is always coming up with clever things. You'll go to Customize Data and Screens forms and that'll bring you to this screen right here and there are some forms in here already which we'll talk about some forms that don't need to be here um, when i was testing stuff out but let's add a new one for the moment so when you click on add new form this comes right up and you get the opportunity to give your form a name Uh, description and a URL. Okay, you can also decide which users are allowed to see the form. Um, the standard permission would be um, access Civi CRM. That's for logged in users that have access to Civi CRM, but you can change that. Okay, so now let's go to contact one. And let's say that this is the person who's filling out the form. So we're going to say autofill as current user. Uh, and now we have the opportunity to drag some things into the form. Uh, you can see it's already filled out a few things for us. Let's pick contact type individual, which we could change. 
uh, contact source. So if we create a new contact, where did it come from? We're going to say it came from this form, which is called my demo, which I just is the name I just gave it. Um, and now let's add some things to the form. Um, here's a field set for the fields that it's going to contain and give it a name. And let's start dragging some things in, into it. Uh, how about first name? Last name. Okay, but I don't like the way that these names are laid out because I would rather have them side by side. Uh, so let's drop a container into this form and put the first name and last name into that container. But not in that order. And then for the container, let's uh, set it to have a layout of side by side fields. Um, we could also give it a border, background color. Uh, we can add some more containers within containers, text boxes, et cetera. I'm going to get into that. Uh, this label is technically a text box in the field, in the form. Okay. Now, in addition to the name of this person, we would also like to have um, some information about them. Uh, we can we can add in their birth date here and add that into a new line. And on another email, which is actually not a field on contact, it's a block. And let me tell you a little bit about blocks because that's what Tim and I have just been working on. So once we have this block in here, it's actually going to pull another template um, which contains more fields. And these are fields for email. We can rearrange these fields or we can just take the defaults. For now, I'm just going to take the defaults. Um, but a couple of things about the block is that uh, the important thing to remember is that a person can have more than one email address. And so uh, by default, it's set up to repeat, um, which is what this add button is for. So we're going to say we can repeat one, two, and say on this form, it's reasonable to say that this person can have enter up to four email addresses. And after that, we're, we just don't care. Um, so we're not going to let them enter any more than that. OK. Um, we can edit any button on this form. We'll just say that. Uh, you can also edit the icons. So the submit button on this form. Uh, I like the word submit, but the check mark is kind of boring. Uh, let's pick. Let's pick a rocket. OK, there we go. Let's save this form and take a look at it. Uh, back to Afform administration. Actually, I'm going to go over here to Afform HTML administration. This is the first thing that we came up with before um, doing the uh, drag and drop editor that I just showed you. Uh, so this is the form that I just created at CiviCRM slash demo. Uh, and let's take a look at that form. OK. So it has put these forms in line for me. Uh, this is a really wide screen, which is why the form looks a little wonky. Um, I'm just going to make the screen a little narrower here. OK, so this is what this form looks like over here. Uh, it's already put in the. Uh, name that I entered before from my test user. Um, and it has already populated with two email addresses that I have on record because uh, that's what my user happens to have at the moment. Um, and you can see that it's put a delete button here by each email. Um, so this is that block. And it was just two fields in the block, but it'll repeat them as many times as I'll let it. And I said four was the max, so it's not going to that uh, add button went away. But I'm happy with these two emails. Um, uh, yeah, build this too. Oh, strong sweet. <laughs> OK. In case anybody wants to send me birthday presents, this is my actual birthday. 
Uh, I'm going to submit this form. And here's my demo user with the information that I just submitted. Um, there's my birthday again, just uh, mark your calendars. And the two email addresses that I entered, the name that I entered on the form. Okay, let's go back and look at the nuts and bolts of this. So the reason that we came up with this HTML editor first is because this is the template that we just wrote. So we started with a blank screen in the drag and drop editor. And this kind of hurts your eyes after looking at those nice blocks over on the other screen. But this is what it just wrote. So it, it just wrote this code for us. This is the template. Um, so in earlier days, if you were creating or overriding a form template in CiviCRM, it would look a little bit like this. Um, not entirely because we were using a different templating system. We were using Smarty on the server side, and this is Angular on the client side. But similar idea, it's a template. And in here, um, a couple things you might notice about this is that, OK, so we've got our form. We've got our one entity on the form, which, was, which I gave the label yourself. Um, and then we've got a field set for that entity. And within that field set, we've got some fields, a container, the last name field, the first name field, birth date, and then an email block. Because I accepted the default template for the email, this is all it is. It just says insert that other thing. And what kind of blew my mind and what I think is really cool about this system is that that other thing that we inserted, the the email default block is actually an A form. So if we go back and look at these things on this list, we have a default email block. Well, that's the thing that it's inserting. And so if we edit it here, we're actually editing it everywhere that every form that's using this, or we can copy this and create a new one and use that for some forms. Uh, and, and that will become available to drag and drop onto the form over here. So we were already using email, but it, if we came up with another block and saved it, it would, there would be two things in here to drag and drop over. Um, or if we edit it now, it's going to change it on the form. Okay. Let's look at a few more configuration options. I'll just show you adding a WYSIWYG because that's just kind of cool um, that on this form you can put in whatever rich content you want, including images, videos, um, anything, and this anything that this WYSIWYG editor can handle. Um, if it gets more complicated than that, then you can go over to editing the actual uh, markup of it. But hopefully the editor will meet most of your needs. Uh, so you can insert a block of anything. You know, if you need to insert a photo, uh, insert a, a list of things, just just do it. Just do the add, add rich content and paste or type in whatever content you want. Um, I already showed you that uh, text boxes are pretty configurable. Um, so this is a text box, uh, but there's you can add another one. Um, and this text can be styled like a heading, for example, uh, give it a color. We're sort of conforming to the Bootstrap theme styles here. Um, so these colors are from the Bootstrap palette. Uh, same for buttons, um, also from the Bootstrap palette. Give it a green button to submit the form. Uh, there's a few more things that you can do here. Um, in addition to editing the label text, you can just take out the label and put a placeholder instead.
Uh, you can add some help text around the fields. Make it required. Probably a good idea. Now you have to enter a name on the form. Okay, let's uh, throw in a couple more blocks here. There's the phone block. Again, this just popped in the whole template. Uh, just popped in because I dropped that block in. And by default, it's repeatable. Uh, unlimited number of times. You can set that limit. Enter two phones and um, no more. Uh, you could also give it a um, you could give it a minimum of two, and uh, then it would just always have those on the form. Okay. I'm going to save this. Go back and look at our demo form that we created. Okay, now we got about a bunch more stuff, and these forms can get long, uh, which is why having these layout elements is really handy. Um, so it automatically, that template that we dropped in automatically put a container around these phone fields uh, to make them appear in line. All right, some more things that we can do. Well, the obvious thing you might be asking yourself is how do we add another contact? Uh, so far, it supports, for the alpha release, supports activities and contacts. That list is going to grow uh, very quickly, I think. But right now, we can add more contacts. We can add activities. Um, so we can add another contact to the form. That's going to put their new container down here. And that new contact, we can drop whatever fields we want uh, into their container, same as contact one. can add as many contacts to the form as you want, as many activities to the form as you want. But for this demo, I'm just going to keep it simple. In terms of how, uh, so we'll see now that I've saved the form, it's updated the markup. Uh, and so now we're looking at the new form that, it's, that the uh, editor has just spit out. Um, uh, you can see I, the minimum and maximum that I've just set for phone. Um, the fact that it's just importing that block, it's using the default. I haven't overridden it, but I could, uh, and just, uh, and if I did that, then this would get very long because it would have all the fields that, um, are actually in that block. It would just stick them in here. Um, here's my rocket icon. So if I was to hand edit this form, the editor, well, it would respond to those edits, but it would also just skip over anything that it didn't understand. Um, so if I was to put a div, if I was just to put a random div in here, um, that the editor doesn't know what to do with and save that. When I go back in to edit it with the GUI, it doesn't even know about it. It just skips over it. But if I resave that form, Yeah, it's still there. So it just skipped over it. So you can hand edit these forms and you can edit them in the in the editor. And those, sh those two things shouldn't interfere with each other. That's the idea. Um, and this is for sort of advanced workflows where you're managing forms, um, managing multiple versions of forms. Um, maybe you have them in version control and you want to be able to um, you know, have them have the files committed somewhere um, and track the changes between them. Uh, you should be able to do that and and stick in your own stuff and still have your users edit the forms um, and save them and, and your changes shouldn't look too different. The, the um, this auto-generated markup that the um, 
that the drag and drop editor came up with is not too ugly. It should lend itself well to tracking changes. And I'm not sure if you touched on this, Coleman, but just in case anybody uh, wasn't aware, though, those forms are being stored on disk in files. So that if you were editing in um, like a, a local dev environment and you had an IDE, you could ma manipulate the HTML in there and reload it the same way you can manipulate in the web browser. And that right. then also leads to those workflows where you can commit the changes to Git and so on. Exactly. Okay, so I'm really pleased with where we've with how far we've come with this editor and with uh, having um, editable forms. Um, really looking forward to this new year where we get a uh, go through the alpha beta and um, and production release of this extension so that we can then start uh, getting forms like this one. Um, like this new individual form, uh, so that this gets transformed into or rewritten as an app form, as a as a form builder form, uh, and shipped with Core, so that you can then have different versions of this uh, for different types of users, uh, drag and drop fields around, do whatever you want with it. Okay. That's my presentation. Do you have anything to add, else to add, Tim? Oh, um, no, I don't think so. Um, I, but I, I'm really happy, you know, with the progress that we're making. Um, I think this is really cool. So there's a little bit of chat going on, uh, Coleman. And Brian has a question. Is the focus right now on contact forms only? You want to take that or shall I? Uh, go ahead, Tim. Okay, so uh, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> we are focusing on contact because you need to focus on something and it's a very useful thing. However, um, most of the infrastructure here is being built around API for entities. So that if you were to um, take a look at that markup, you'd find a spot where it says that you know, this record is a contact record. You could change that bit of markup to be an event record or a participant record. That said, expanding to other business areas will also lead to other functional issues. So if you want to actually administer contribution records, then um, you're going to have a fairly, fairly limited ability until you get payment processing widgets uh, involved. Once you get payment processing widgets, then a lot more becomes available on the, the contribution record side. Is that a fair response, Coleman? Yes, it's built with that flexibility in mind. Um, there's nothing in AFORMS that's hard coded around contacts. That's just the first entity we tackled and put up in the GUI. Um, but yes, it is using API 4 to, to read and write data. So anything that has an API entity should be able to be exposed to um, form builder forms. Let's take a few more questions from the fire hose over here on the right. Uh, so we got the one about contact forms. Yep. Uh, so one person asked, uh, how would these things be debugged? Um, and a quick answer is that uh, in Angular, uh, we have a CRM UI debug directive. Uh, so you can just put a basically put a debug statement in your form and then run it as an administrator um, with debug in the URL or a form or a Angular debug in the URL, and it will spit out all the data that you're looking for. So that's pretty handy. Uh, and I, I've used that extensively in developing uh, this, um, this module. And that's pretty similar to, um, you know, the person was, uh, the questioner was comparing it to Smarty. So it's pretty similar to the Smarty debug. Um, statement that you can stick in a Smarty form. Uh, 
Another person asked if uh, these flexible forms can be used for search. Eventually, yes, I would like it to be able to do that. Right now, we're focused on uh, what we're calling CRUD forms, which is you know create, read, update, delete records forms. Uh, search is slightly different than that because you're not actually creating records with search. Um, but the basic idea of search is composed of fields, and this module is all about being able to put fields wherever you want. Um, you know, those two should be able to merge together. It's just a question of um, we're focusing on getting uh, the basics in order first for this initial release. Basically the same answer for the question about contribution forms. The answer is not yet, but you know, this is, we're basically putting together the building blocks that we want to use for creating and updating forms in Civi CRM so that more and more of our forms in Civi CRM core are built this way, uh, which means that they can be edited this way um, and so contribution form is one of those that we'd like to be able to do that too. There's a question Alan asked and Brian reiterated about um, runtime hooks, uh, modifications to the, the information. And I, there's a couple of answers there. Um, one is that there is a PHP hook um, called alter angular which is used to define changes to Angular documents. And it basically presents an interface that's a bit like a jQuery. You use a selector and you can inject something or you can move something or remove something or modify its parameters. Um, and that bit runs server side and is compiled into the document so that it is cached and um, delivered fairly quickly uh, to the clients, right? So that gives you the first ability to hook in and change the way a, a form works programmatically. Um, the second thing is then on the client side. Well, on the client side, um, Angular provides um, constructs like ng-if and ng-show, ng-hide, ng-repeat, where you can make elements conditional or variable. Um, so if you really need something that's very dynamic, um, you can drop in an ngif on into the markup. And the neat thing is that you can actually, you don't have to write server-side code to make those kinds of conditionals. You can um, flip over to the HTML view of the screen, put an ngif on some random element of the UI. And if I'm correct, Coleman, the GUI will preserve those. Um, right may not show them like it's not going to be a pretty screen for composing conditionals um because the conditionals can be complex but um it, if you drop into html you can put the conditionals pretty easily mm -hmm. another question was about responsive uh css and so as i said this is currently taking advantage of the bootstrap theme which is something that has been sort of piecemeal integrated into Civi CRM. Um, and we would like to continue integrating it with Civi CRM because Bootstrap is um, responsive by design. And so everything that I've shown you so far is using that theme. So if you use that extension and you use this extension, then yes, you will have something that's automatically responsive. I wanted to add a, a little bit, um something that I forgot to mention on the hooks. Um, apologies if it's a distraction there, but this is one of my sort of favorite things in this architecture, which is that um, the hooks, because they run during the compilation of the JS and the CSS, they can be run up front. So when you upgrade a site, um, one can implement a loop that applies those hooks across basically every document to make sure that it still um, produces some kind of sane output. The tooling isn't there. Um, it's another component that's on the roadmap. Um, 
but that I'm kind of excited about the improved maintainability of customizations when we're able to take those hooks and pre-execute them up front um, as part of one's upgrade routine. Mm -hmm. There's another question in here about the contact summary extension. Yes, so the contact summary extension uses Angular like this does for the GUI part, the editor. Uh, so the contact summary editor is an Angular editor, which is creating a document sort of like this one is creating, but it that one is creating a Smarty document. So that's creating a, a Smarty template that is then executed entirely server side um, and use and can mix in profiles, which is uh, this traditional way of creating custom forms in Civi Serum. So that is sort of a incremental step. Um, and currently, because that one is focused on presentation as in presentation of the contact summary page, and this one is focused on input forms uh, as in the new, sum new contact screen, uh, you can use both. So you can use this extension to override the contact summary screen and put in whatever fields you want. And you can use, um, sorry, the new contact screen for this extension and the summary screen for the other extension. Uh, and they will both allow you to have a more flexible site. There's a comment in here, uh, which I think has kind of been answered. Uh, the question from Andy Clark is about um, conditional fields. So if field A is put in, then field B becomes required. Alan astutely pointed out uh, the use of ng-if um, as something that you can use to improvise those kinds of conditionals. Yes, and I, you know, on, in my mental roadmap, I would like those conditionals to be something that the GUI editor can at least uh, do simple ones for you via drag and drop and select boxes so that you don't have to memorize that code. Uh, maybe the really complicated ones, um, you know, like, you know, require this field from this family member if that other family member has entered something similar. Um, you know, that's something you still might have to handwrite, but the, the simple ones like, um, you know, this, uh, you know, this, uh, if you say that you have three children, then you actually have to enter uh, three names. That's something that the GUI editor should be able to do eventually. Also, I don't know if anybody has ever had this problem, but um, uh, Angular really neatly solves the problem of uh, hidden fields being uh, required. I showed you um, a repeatable block in the demo where there were three email addresses, and you could um, you could enter you know one, two, or three. Um, but if you hit the minus button and got rid of a block, uh, even though that email address was required. Uh, that block was gone, so it, it would not require it. Um, that's just Angular stepping in and, and doing some nice stuff for us. Um, whereas, you know, back in the olden days, um, those fields wouldn't actually go away. Um, they would just be hidden with a little bit of CSS. Um, so that's nice. Cool. Uh, Coleman, did you catch the question from Dave Morton up above uh, about custom fields? Can you include custom fields? Uh, yes, yes. In fact, I um, didn't show it in the demo, but yes, their custom fields were in that list of available fields to drag and drop from the palette. Um, and uh, on the on my short list for things to do, uh, hopefully even before the alpha, is to get um, the multi-value custom fields, which are basically repeatable blocks, um, to be available as well, um, just like email and um, address and phone. And if I understood where uh, you were going with the multi-value custom fields um, correctly, the idea was that the it would be a block, 
right? So you create a multi-value custom field for employment history, right? And mm -hmm. each uh, item in someone's employment history is a record. Mm -hmm. um, there would be an auto-generated block that lists all of the fields in there. But mm -hmm. if you don't want to show all of those fields, you can customize that block and sort of pick and choose the particular fields. Right, and you can either override it on that one form or you can override it and do save as and um, and have a, a new stylized block available for reuse. So that's actually kind of neat if you think about um, like, I don't know, taking uh, job applications and you want to follow up with references. So you have your custom data group for the employment history and on the front end, you only show the date and the name of the employer. On the back end, you show the name, the date, um, a Boolean flag for whether you followed up uh, with their references and some notes about what the references said. Right. That's and so if you if you override that auto generated custom field block that has all the fields in it by default, if you override that and just include the two that you want, then every time somebody who's building forms drags those onto a form, that's what they'll get. Now they can still tweak it after that, but that's, you know, it sets more sensible defaults that way. Cool. Next question um, about CMS dependency. Uh, as far as we know, this should work on each of the CMSs. We are not actively testing um, on every CMS all of the time, but it is definitely using APIs that are independent of the DNS. Right. Yes, it's using all Civi CRM framework stuff. So everything in Civi CRM that works on across CMS it should work for this as well. There was a question about public forms. So you saw in the beginning of my demo, I uh, there were no permissions set for the form, and then I set some permissions. So if you give it the no permissions, um, that means anybody can access it. Be careful with that, um, because that does make the form public. And I think, Tim, we need to set a default of um, access to VCRM for when creating new forms. Okay, cool. Um, cause that is the default that is, should be there right now. Mm -hmm. yep. um, okay. Good. Uh, so Alan Shaw just asked, um, Afform doesn't currently affect any native forms, but the general plan is to rewrite more native forms to use Afform. Correct. Correct. Uh, once we get this into a stable release, um, and then can, uh, either require it or bundle it, uh, or or merge it into Civi CRM core, um, as we did recently with API 4 was an extension, then it was a bundle extension, and then it was merged into core itself and no longer an extension. Uh, this might follow a similar path. Uh, once it's bundled into core, then we can start uh, basically ripping out core forms and replacing them with, uh, with this. Cool. So I'm glad that everybody came. We got a great turnout for this presentation. And if more people want to watch it, uh, it was recorded. We'll post a link. Um, and we will, and also keep an eye out for that alpha release uh, that you'll be able to download shortly. Um, it does depend on uh, the alpha of Civi CRM. So if you're going to download the alpha now and test it, uh, you will need to also be on the tip of the, uh, the tip of the um, Civi CRM, I think 5.22 alpha, um, because of a couple of core changes made. Not big stuff, but just a couple things to help this uh, work better. All right, looking Great. forward Thanks. to people Colin. trying it out and giving your feedback, and uh, also feel free to contribute code as well. And money too. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> we do have a make it happen active for this. Um, but if you want to contribute code, you can take a look at the GitLab project, uh, lab.civicrm.org, extensions, Afform, correct.
Yes, that is correct. Like that. <laughs>